Hey guys, it's Wutini from GayGamer.net here with another one of my video podcasts. Um, lots of gaming this week. Just lots. Too much gaming, in fact. Um, I kind of wish that I had a week's worth of vacation that I could take from my job so that I could just stay home and play games all day every day because that's probably the only way I'm going to finish everything. Um, the first new game that I got, um, because I finished Gabrielle's Ghostly Groove, 3D, uh, which you can look for a review on the site this week. Last week was really busy, so it got a little bit pushed off, but look for that. Um, I got myself the new Professor Layton game, Professor Layton and the Last Spectre, which, uh, interestingly, I went to Best Buy on Tuesday to pick up something else and said, oh, let me pick up the new Professor Layton game while I'm there. They did not have it, which I thought was really weird. Um, I had checked the website to see if they had it in stock at the Best Buy I was going to go to, and all of the Best Buys in New York City had it listed as available for pre-order, and you could pick it up on Monday. Remember, this was Tuesday morning, and it said you could pick it up the previous day. So, I guess you had to time travel, I don't really know. Um, but I went there and I asked them and I said, what's up with this? And he checked the computer and he says that they'd had none in stock at the store so that you had to go to, you know, you know, like you had to, they were on order. He had like 20 copies on order, but it came out Monday, but on Tuesday night, they still had none in the store. So I said, I'll oh, forget it. And I just went home. And then the next day I said, I guess I'll have to stop. I checked the Best Buy website again. Still no go. I said, ah, I guess I'll have to go to GameStop and pick it up there. And I know that GameStop traditionally charges an extra five bucks on some of the big Nintendo DS releases. Um, I got scammed on that once before, so I tend not to buy DS games from GameStop if I can help it. Or at least I check the prices to make sure I'm not getting ripped off. I don't know why they do it, but they do. Um, but Best Buy had Last Spectre listed at $39.99 retail, which seemed a bit high. And GameStop had it for $34.99, so I thought, oh, well, that's fine then. And, like, I checked Amazon, and they had it listed for, like, $37.99 or something, or $35.98 or something, whatever it was. So I thought, okay, so I guess $35 is the actual price. Because it has that extra bonus RPG game in it, so I thought maybe they were charging extra because it's a lot of game in one package. Um, but no. Um, in fact, the game is $29.99. So, um... GameStop is ripping you off for an extra five bucks if you buy it there. Um, and hopefully when Best Buy does actually get it in stock, they won't be charging 39 That was just a mistake. Because um, Best Buy should be charging 29 because that's they're pretty good about that sort of thing. Um, it's funny because I thought, oh, well, whatever, I'll just go to GameStop and get it. And then suddenly I realized, no, because I couldn't think of anywhere else to go. You know, it's like it's like music stores. Where are you going to go to get your music? You, you kind of have to buy it online now because... There's no Tower Records, there's no Virgin Megastore. Unless you want to go to, like, your local record shop, you're screwed. So, but I just suddenly had a complete brain fart, and suddenly that synapse fired, and I went, Durr, there's the Nintendo World Store in Rockefeller Center. So I just hopped the train, I went over there, and bought it. $30, in and out, done. No problem. So, that's great. And the game is terrific. The, the, the guy at Nintendo World warned me... He's like, have you tried the RPG yet? And I said, no, I haven't played any of it yet. And he's like, cause he's like, I haven't even touched the actual game because I've just been playing this RPG, London Life. And he's gotten so engrossed in London Life that he hasn't even played the Professor Layton game. So I was like, thank you for the heads up. I will not touch London Life until I have finished the Professor Layton game proper. Because... Lord knows, I would do the same exact thing and get so engrossed in creating my little life in imaginary London and buying clothes and decorating my house and helping people out that I'd be like, oh right, there's this whole other game. Oops. Um, but, so, I can't speak to London life yet. That'll be in a later podcast. But um, as far as Last Vector goes, it's terrific. It's exactly like all the other latent games. They're just great. Um... You play along, and then every so often you find that puzzle that just completely stumps you for like a good ten minutes staring at your DS screen, and then suddenly you realize, oh wait, I'm at my subway destination, I have to get off the train now, I'll have to figure this out later. Um, and then you suddenly hit upon the solution and go, duh, why didn't I see that from the start? It's just a trick question, but whatever. Um, but I love it. 
Uh, Professor Layton is terrific. I love these games. They make me feel really, really smart. And then the next puzzle makes me feel really, really stupid. So, you know. That's just how those games go. <laughs> um, but the other game that I was picking up um, that Tuesday at Best Buy on its release date, and I do have to hang my head in shame on this one because, once again, it proves that I have absolutely no willpower whatsoever. And that is Batman Arkham City. Yes, I know. I know. I know. But I played it hands-on at New York Comic Con, and you can read my impressions on the site. Um, but I loved it. It was terrific. Played great. Played just like the first one. Really smooth. Looked amazing. I loved Arkham Asylum, so I was super excited for Arkham City. I was just going to hold off because I had all these other games I was playing. Um, but the hands-on got me so excited, and then interviewing uh, the game director, Sefton Hill, at the uh, launch event at Toys R Us in Times Square, um, you can also find that interview attached to the same article as the hands-on impressions on the site. Um, just, it got me so excited for it that I just couldn't, and I have no willpower, and I just caved, and I bought it. And it's great. I'm enjoying it a great deal, although... I have to say that I'm sort of enjoying it a little less than Arkham Asylum, um, just because it's an open-world game. Uh, Stephen Hill said in the interview that this is like Rock Rocksteady's first open-world game and that they didn't want to make it too big because they didn't want it to be like a lot of open-world games where you're just wandering aimlessly through nothing to get from point A to point B so that you can continue the story. They wanted everything to be condensed, and everything has a purpose, and every building, there's something about it that, you know, whatever. So it does feel more condensed, so that, like, you know, every building you go to is going to have some kind of, like, you know, a Riddler puzzle or something to do. Um, you don't have to travel, like, across vast distances to get to the next story point. My problem, though, is that it almost feels too condensed and too busy. Um, because there's a main storyline going on, but then in trying to complete the main storyline, I'm stumbling across all these side quests, and then some of the side quests are like, okay, now go do this. And I'm like, but wait, what about that? Like, don't I need to keep doing that? And all of the quests, both the main quest and the side quests, they make it seem really urgent. And you can't do that. And and I know that, in, I know in my head, I'm like, okay, it's just a game. Like, yes, I'm poisoned, but there's really no rush to get that cure because the game has not given me a timer or a countdown, so I know I'm okay and I can just take my time and get distracted by the Riddler and go save his people. And then there's Zaz calling me on telephones saying... I'm going to kill somebody if you don't get to this phone in time. That gives you a counter, so you have to get to that phone in time. And if you don't, well, I don't know, because I've only done one yet. But there was another phone ringing, and I'm like, I'm not answering that, because I have to go and figure out where Mr. Freeze is, because I don't have time to deal with Zaz right now. It's just too much. And I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Like, there's so many side quests that I'm getting very distracted. Um, so it's, it's almost like it's too much activity. And... Like, somebody had said that, like, oh, the main quest, you can do the main quest in, like, six hours or something ridiculous. It's, like, really short. And I'm like, well, that seems really short. Except that now I see what they mean. Like, the actual main quest storyline might take you six hours to complete, but there's, like, countless other side quests to do with, like, basically every single Batman villain in the entire place. So, like, they're all in this game. Um, they're getting kind of ridiculous. There's just so many of them. Um, so, yeah, so we'll see how long I end up getting distracted by side quests, and if I ever get back to the main quest to look for Mr. Freeze, I don't know. Um, and then the other thing is the Riddler trophies. Oh my god. I liked Arkham Asylum because the Riddler trophies, they were doable. Like, I could find all the little hidden ones, I could find all the little, you know, the, you know, the, the environmental ones where you have to, like, stand in a certain place and make the question mark. It was like, okay, like, I can do those, I can find those. Some of them were a little tricky. But I was able to complete that, and I felt very, like, proud of myself, because usually those kinds of collecting things I'm not good at, because I'll miss some, and I can't find them, and it gets frustrating, and then I say, well, what the hell, I finished the main game, I don't care. 
Um, but there's like hundreds and hundreds of them. And you, there's some you find, there's some that you, the, the big, the big painting, the environment ones are back. But then there's these other ones where they're in like these domes and there's these question mark platforms around, but you don't know what you have to do to get them. You know, like there was one that I like shot my battering at certain question marks and that opened it up. There was one with a magnet that it took me a little time to figure out what I was supposed to do. Um, but like, they're not clear how you're supposed to open that dome. There's just these platforms and you step on them, but then do you have to step on that one or how do you step on, you know, like, what do you do? Do you blow them up? I, I don't even know. So I'm afraid that I'm never going to complete the Riddler thing. And I kind of need to just turn off my OCD and just say, don't worry about it. You're not going to collect them all. Just don't even worry because it's never going to happen. So don't even try because then you won't get upset that you can't do it. Um, but I'm enjoying it still so far. Um, and that's going to take me well into November. Um, the problem is, is that November 11th is Skyrim. And then the week after that is Skyward Sword, both of which I also want to play. However, I've already put Deus Ex aside so that I can play Arkham City. So I'm pretty much kind of thinking now, I'm like, okay, no. So I have to draw a line in the sand, and I will not be getting Skyrim when it comes out. Skyward Sword, probably not either. It depends on how quickly I can get through Arkham City. I don't even know. Because, on top of all this, Dance Central 2 comes out in, in like, tomorrow, if you're watching this one I posted on Monday. It comes out on Tuesday the 25th, so I'm like, I've already pre-ordered that so I can get the free 400 Microsoft points so that I can, you know, transfer all my Dance Central 1 songs in basically for free um, and not have to pay for it. Um, and I did that at Best Buy, and they're giving a $20 off of, if you buy Dance Central 2, or Connect Sports 2, I think, or Adventures 2, I forget which one it is, but there's two sequels coming out for Connect, and if you buy them, you get $20 off a select Connect game, one of which was the Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster, which I saw at E3 and was totally awed by, it was so cute and wonderful, so I thought, eh, for $30, why not? So I've ordered that as well, which that, I don't even think I'm going to start playing because there's so much else to do. Um, but at least something like Dance Central, you can't, you know, you play that, and then you get really tired, so then you have to sit down, and then you can play something like Batman. Um, whereas Batman, you can just sit there and play it for hours, and time just flies. Alright, I have to shut up now, because this one has gone on way too long, and I apologize. But, uh, like I said, there was a lot of gaming going on, there's a lot of gaming coming up. So, um, I am going to force myself to not buy the game when it first comes out, and Skyrim will just have to wait. Yeah, tune in next time and see if that worked. <laughs> Bye!